Hopefully people join, right? <laughs> We have plans to watch videos if they don't. <laughs> All right, it looks like we have a few people joining. Um, so I I'm gonna go ahead and get this started so we can go, we only have 45 minutes, so we wanna use the time wisely. Um, but everybody, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all, um, for all of our students, sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. A few announcements before we get started. Um, you can use the Q&A buttons on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Um, so anytime you have a question, just feel free to type it. Your camera and microphone are off, um, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, and this is just one of many different sessions happening. So be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia. Um, and this presentation is also being recorded and will be available within about a week. Um, at that same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. Um, so thank you guys so much. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. Uh, welcome to Indiana, the crossroads of America. My name is Jill Shimmick. I'm a senior assistant director of admissions for Indiana University. I've been working in admissions at IU for almost nine years now. Um, I am originally from the great state of Iowa, uh, where I graduated with a degree in English from the University of Northern Iowa. I was a teacher for several years before coming in, into the admissions world. Um, I moved to Bloomington, Indiana in 2009. I worked towards my master's degree while working at IU, and so I do have an IU degree and officially became a Hoosier in 2014 that way. Um, and I currently work regionally for Indiana University, so I am based in Washington, D.C. now. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah DiNardo. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission at Butler University. Um, I am also a regional admission counselor like Jill. I'm also based in the D.C. metro area. Um, I'm actually a Virginia, um, you know, th through and through. I was born in Virginia, Virginia resident pretty much my whole life. Um, I did go to college in the Midwest, not so much in Indiana, but just over in Ohio. So um, I love working with students that are looking at kind of the Midwestern states and all of that. I've been in um, admission for about seven years now, um, which is crazy to think about. Um, and I've worked at two different institutions, but I've been at Butler for just over five years. We're really excited to have you guys tonight and hope you learn a little bit more. Good evening, everyone. Ben Hatchett from DePaul University. I'm one of our assistant directors here, and I'm celebrating year eight consecutively at DePaul, four as a student and four as an employee. So I love being a DePaul Tiger so much I haven't left yet. Uh, I'm born and raised in Southern Indiana, and I'm currently residing in Indiana. But this is my fourth year representing Virginia, and can't wait to uh, share a few things about our lovely state. And thank you for joining us tonight. And that's something that I hope that you get out of this presentation. Is we had so much fun putting this together um, and thinking about all the things that we love, not only about the communities each of our colleges are in, but just about Indiana in general. Um, our three universities, Butler in Indiana, in, in Indianapolis, DePaul and Greencastle, and Indiana University in Bloomington, each offer a unique take on what an Indiana college experience can entail, from charming town squares to the excitement of downtown city life and small liberal arts colleges to comprehensive public universities, your future college home could be waiting for you in Indiana. We'll tell you more about what to expect about life in Indiana, everything from how to get here to our favorite spots to spend time and eat food, as well as more about each of our individual schools. 
Indiana's state motto, the crossroads of America, comes from the state's very literal position as the crossroads of many U.S. highways and interstates. Interstates 80, 70, and 64 all cross our state from east to west, and Interstate 65 connects Hoosiers to places north like Chicago and south like Louisville and Nashville. Indianapolis is the state capital, and it's just three and a half hours south of Chicago, Illinois, two hours north of Louisville, Kentucky, and four hours east of St. Louis, Missouri. So it's really accessible to a lot of different Midwestern cities and Southern cities too. We should also note that driving in the Midwest is nothing like driving on the East Coast. Traffic is so much lighter. Once you're on a major highway, uh, travel move Travel moves at about a pace of a mile a minute. Um, so it's really relaxing and quick to get from place to place once you're in the Midwest. Indiana is not only easily, easily accessible by road, flying here is a breeze uh, through the Indianapolis International Airport. And I always feel a bit like a travel guide when I talk about the airport. It's this, the, the outside of the airport you can see in the top right corner photo. Um, but it's consistently, the airport is so easy to use. It's consistently ranked at the top of, top of travel and leisure's best um, list of best domestic airports. And there's easy, really quick security lines, plenty of charging stations and seating. Um, and not only offers convenient access to Indianapolis, but also Bloomington and Greencastle. Um, and it, it is just a delight to drive through. You can see also on the slide are pictures of Indianapolis, um, which it is a thriving city. Um, and I think Sarah will talk a little bit more about Indianapolis uh, later, but um, there's a lot of excitement happening uh, in Indiana's capital. The climate in central Indiana, where all three of our schools are located, showcases all four seasons, mild winter, long spring and a long fall, and a summer that is notably less humid than the mid-Atlantic. Also part of the lovely and wonderful things that we are proud about in central Indiana, got to be the sports teams. So in Indianapolis and in the center of the state, you not only have the capital, but you have just about every pro professional sports team well represented. You can see across the screen here, many different sports, some of which you have to look forward to here. So in Indianapolis and across the state, you've got professional sports franchises just in downtown. You've got the NBA's Pacers and the WNBA's Fever right in the heart of Indianapolis. You've got the Colts, of course, for the NFL. You've got pro baseball, pro soccer, and pro hockey all within driving distance and close by in the nation or the state's capital. Indianapolis is also the racing capital of the world. It's the home and the birthplace of IndyCar. Here is where you can experience the world's oldest and most famous auto racing tracks. Since 1909, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway has been home of the Indianapolis 500. Each year, hundreds of thousands of spectators will attend races, but most famously, the IndyCar series hosts the Indianapolis 500, and NASCAR hosts the Brickyard 400 races at the historic 2.5-mile oval track the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The NCAA National Headquarters and Front Office is also prominently located in downtown Indianapolis. Included in, in, in the NCAA complex is Collegiate Athletics Museums and the Hall of Champions, featuring an immersive and interactive showcase of achievements stretching across the conference's 24 athletic programs. Each year, you can expect regional tournaments and national events coinciding with the NCAA, especially when the spring rolls around and March Madness season is here, and you can find college basketball tournaments and regional hostings happening in Indianapolis and across the state. Indiana is often associated with basketball. Being a lead producer of top caliber basketball players and collegiate talent, Butler University and Indiana University here have historic and storied programs of success at the Division I level, and DePaul University remains a Division III women's basketball powerhouse. Each school has had success at their level throughout the years. Included on this slide in the top right, you can see Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. It's one of historic, several historic venues. Hinkle Fieldhouse is home to the Butler Bulldogs and was completed in early 1928. It was the largest basketball arena at the time and remained with that title until 1950. So not only do each of our college campuses have some great basketball arenas and venues to check out, but also at the high school level. Basketball is all over and it's pretty obvious when you drive around, you'll see high schools have gymnasiums and stadiums almost built up around their basketball teams. So ball is very much a way of life here in the Hoosier State. 
And across this slide again, you can see we've got the Pacers in action, the Colts there at Lucas Oil, Hinkle Fieldhouse for the Bulldogs up in top, and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway there in the center. Lucas Oil is one of my favorite stadiums. I love the retractable, retractable roof there. It's such a neat feature. Uh, every college student will need to take a break from campus life at some point, and what better way to rejuvenate yourself than in nature? And the state of Indiana boasts 24 state parks, as well as the newest national park, uh, the Indiana Dunes National Park along the shore of Lake Michigan. There are several unique parks within just one or two hours of driving distance from each of our campuses, including um, Shades and Turkey Run State Parks, which offer opportunities hiking and canoeing along Sugar Creek while taking in gorgeous sandstone cliffs. In the wintertime, you want to come back to search the area for bald eagles. Um, Indiana's largest state park is Brown County State Park, which is located about 20 miles east of Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, you can climb the 90 foot high Fireman's Tower for spectacular views of the best fall foliage in the Midwest. And then you'll learn why locals refer to Brown County as the Little Smokies. Um, because it, I think it surprises a lot of people that something um, that rolling uh, and colorful is located in a state that normally kind of gets a reputation of being flat and full of cornfields. Um, and that's not, the, that's not the case here. Um, another great state park in our area is McCormick's Creek State Park. Um, and it will give you a glimpse into Indiana's famed limestone. You can see a bit of it again in the top right corner. Um, the picture of the limestone camp canyon uh, within McCormick's Creek State Park. Indiana limestone is known worldwide and has been featured, uh, is still on, build, is used in, to build buildings like the Empire State Building, uh, the Pentagon, National Cathedral, and the Biltmore State in North Carolina. One of my favorite things about walking around hiking McCormick's Creek is the years, decades old sinkholes that you can find right off the hiking trails. It's just so fun to actually see geology out in the wild. Um, and so that's one of my favorite things. Indiana does also still have some um, covered bridges and you can see those, I believe at Shades State Park as well as um, Brown County State Park, you can see a couple of those. And then the fall colors in Indiana are absolutely amazing in general. And I love, it feels like fall finally on the East Coast. And so seeing the colors makes me look forward to the next month or so that we'll get out here. I'm happy to report fall is here in Indiana. We've had some nice weather. We were all super excited and obviously we chose four beautiful picturesque <laughs> Indiana fall days. The, the peak foliage here is awesome. <laughs> yes, very much looking forward to the crisp temperatures here in the DC area. Um, so just wanna talk a little bit about each of our locations. So each one of our colleges is actually located in a very different setting in central Indiana. Butler is a mid-sized private university located in a residential neighborhood about five miles north of downtown Indianapolis. Indianapolis is the 17th largest city in the U.S. and it has everything any major metropolitan area kind of has to offer for students and, and folks that live in the area. Um, Butler students take advantage of, the, of our campus location by doing internships and engaging in community service and attending um, cultural events in the city limits of Indianapolis. Um, at Butler, there's not really a college town or even really a downtown right near our campus because we are located right in a residential neighborhood. So therefore, students typically hang out in Broad Ripple Village, which is one of the cultural neighborhoods of Indianapolis, and it's about a two and a half mile trek northeast of our campus. Um, personally, some of my favorite restaurants in the city of Indianapolis are in uh, Broad Ripple, such as the Garden Table and Basbo's Pizza, two great spots if you come out, definitely check them out. Um, DePaul is a private liberal arts college in a little bit more of a rural setting in Greencastle, Indiana, which is about, which is a small town about 45 miles southwest of Indianapolis. DePaul is a 100% residential college campus where students actually live on campus for all four of their years. Students can explore the DePaul Nature Park and all 695 acres of the campus. Um, and then they can also head into Greencastle to enjoy a kind of a quintessential small Midwestern town square with a variety of different restaurants um, that are all very walkable and very welcoming to the student body. And then lastly, IU is a big school in a small city um, with about 33,000 undergraduate students and 80,000 year round residents in Bloomington. Uh, life really revolves around the university's calendar, whether it's a football game or graduation weekend, there's always something going on. 
Um, whether you're biking along the Beeline Trail that snakes through downtown Bloomington or grabbing fries at Nick's English Hunt, IU students are really a part of the fabric of Bloomington. Downtown Bloomington is steps from campus and lives up to the reputation as a foodie town. Uh, you'll find lots of different local restaurants featuring everything from just pub fare to cu cuisines from around the world. So each of our schools have been around for a little while. And with that comes some exciting, fun college traditions. At DePaul and Indiana University in Bloomington, Little Five is one of those spectacles. In fact, we think it might be one of the most unique traditions in collegiate sports, if you will, and it's celebrated at both of our schools. The Little 500 bike relay race has been immortalized in the 1978 film Breaking Away. It's an iconic campus-wide community event that in a way pays homage to that Indy 500 race we alluded to earlier happening each spring. At IU, the spring races bring campus together to celebrate student athletic achievement and a final gathering before the final exam begins. Leading up to the final race televised on ESPN3, teams participate in a series of qualifying races that are just as celebratory. At DePaul, each spring includes a series of races and campus events that make up one of the greatest spectacles on our campus. Students field teams to compete in three events that make up Little Five. You have your time trials, street sprints, and the criterium race, or crit for short, all add up to an overall winner and a team winner. So you have an individual bragging right champion and a team bragging right champion. Um, Dance marathon, as you can see in the top right, top left corner, is big. All of our schools will dance out for a day and raise funds to, pro to benefit and go toward children at Riley Hospital for Children in Indianapolis. DePaul's Monon Bell Classic in the top right corner shows you the Monon Bell. It's a 300-pound bell that ran on the, the Ronan rail line through the Midwest. DePaul battles Wabash College. They're all tribal every fall. It's the only nationally televised Division III football event in the country, and the winner gets to keep that great big bell for the year. Homecoming at Butler is a campus community event that the Butler community looks forward to each and every year. Homecoming happens with the campus coming alive for fun competitions among the student body. Greek houses partner with residence halls for lawn decorating in accordance to the each year's signature theme. And on the morning of homecoming, Butler fraternities compete in a fast-paced chariot race down Hampton Drive. Homecoming is a fun way for the campus to celebrate their bulldog pride. Basketball traditions, we keep talking about basketball. Of course, some of our colleges have traditions around those too. At Butler during March Madness for men's basketball, students will storm the streets after a campus, after storm campus after a win. And in Indiana University in Bloomington, Hoosier Hysteria is the first open basketball practice of the year at IU where students will start lining up outside of assembly hall early in the morning so they can get the first view of the IU men's and women's teams in action. And while we're on the topic of traditions, we wanna tell you a little bit about our mascots. Absolutely, we love our traditions, but I think we love our mascots even more. At least I guess that's probably the case at Butler. Uh, Butler uh, has a live Bulldog mascot program. So as you can see in the picture on the left-hand side of your screen, that adorable little Bulldog, that is our guy. His name is Butler Blue the Fourth, or we just refer to him as Blue. He is an English Bulldog and actually just started his um, terms of service, if you will, in February of this past year. Um, he uh, took over the reins or the, the changing of the collar happened in February as he uh, took over from Trip, who was our previous mascot. Um, he has a very big social media presence, so I definitely recommend you take out your phone now and go check him out on Instagram at the Butler Blue. Um, Blue and his handler's family actually live right on our campus in one of our apartments because there's constantly uh, things happening that Blue's got to be at, whether it be a media appearance, a basketball game, or meeting prospective students when they come to campus. So if you guys make the trip out, um, try to make sure that you get to see him and get your picture with Blue because he is absolutely adorable. I think Blue might have a busier schedule than I do. Absolutely, 100%. At IU Bloomington, we are mascotless, but not for lack of trying. Multiple mascots were chosen, tried throughout the 20th century, including an owl, a raccoon, a goat, and a bison. Uh, in the 1960s, students even campaigned for a live bison to run around Memorial Stadium during football game days. 
that was shot down by the administration and the creatures have been proudly mascotless since the early 1970s. And over at DePaul, DePaul is home to tigers. You can see our beloved mascot in the bottom corner there, Tyler the Tiger. He makes routine appearances across campus during athletic events and campus gatherings. Now, over the years, Tyler has taken a variety of forms. And unfortunately, while today he is no longer necessarily a live tiger, uh, he's still pretty lively, we think. He's our ti he is still our tiger king. We think Tyler's pretty cool for all you cool cats and kittens out there. But if you're looking for more tigers and wanting to get close to some real life exotic felines, just 30 minutes from our campus actually is the exotic feline rescue center. Love that. There's all different types of animals in, in central Indiana, right? Uh, something else that we kind of wanted to highlight here is what we refer to as, as um, kind of Midwestern or Hoosier hospitality. So folks in the Midwest are quite friendly and frequently wanting to just engage in conversation with you. So this is something that you're gonna see on all of our college campuses, um, just like walking to and from class or you know, from a sporting event, whatever it may be. Um, people you may or may not know will just you know, say hi, give you a friendly smile. Um, personally, as an East Coaster and someone who was, you know, did not grow up in the Midwest, this kind of shocked me the first time I went out to Indiana when I was at the airport and the person checking me in at my, you know, the gate really just wanted to know how I was doing, how my day was going and not just in kind of a casual way, like really wanted to get to know me. So um, it's something that I think uh, we all really appreciate about the Midwest and something that our students also love. All of our students love to, uh, you know, they want to engage with one another and they're always looking to meet a new friend or, or make a new friend as well. So we're actually going to shift gears just a little bit here and um, actually spend a few minutes for each one of us to um, talk a little bit more about our institutions. I know we talked about Central Indiana as a whole and kind of highlighted a few things about all of our schools, but now we're just going to spend a few minutes kind of diving a little bit deeper into our specific schools. So as I mentioned before, Butler University is a private, non-religiously affiliated, mid-sized university located in the city limits of Indianapolis, Indiana. We have just under about 4,700 undergraduate students and about 500 graduate students. While we are located in the city limits of Indianapolis, we are five miles directly north of downtown in that residential neighborhood. So built kind of right into the neighborhood in Indy. We're known for providing small classes, opportunities to engage with professors in real world experiences through internships, research with faculty mentors, performances, and community engagement. The student population at Butler over the past 10 years or so has actually changed drastically with about 55% of our students now coming from out of state. We actually have a very good portion of our students now coming from Virginia, which is really exciting. Butler has an early action deadline of November 1st, a regular decision deadline of February 1st, and a middle 50% range of about a 3.6 to a 4.1 weighted GPA, so weighted, not unweighted, um, a 24 to a 30 ACT or an 1150 to 1300 SAT. Uh, Butler is now a test optional institution and will be moving forward, um, but students will automatically be considered for merit-based scholarships when they apply to the university. Butler was founded as a liberal arts institution and that still serves as our educational foundation today. With an average class size at 22 and the student to faculty ratio of 11 to one, you'll find your classroom experience to be very uh, student focused and engaging. Your professors will get to know you and you'll get to know your classmates as well through lots of discussions and group projects. We have six different academic colleges that focus on communication, as you can see in the bottom left corner. Um, Education kind of in the middle. Um, our liberal arts and sciences in that upper uh, right hand corner is going to be our new science quad that we're super excited about that's under construction. Um, now I've lost my place. Um, our health sciences in the bottom right corner. So those are students looking at our digital cadaver that we have on campus. Um, we have visual and performing arts. So the upper left hand corner is a picture of our Students, um, our ballet students, we have one of the top ranked classical ballet programs in the nation in the Jordan College of the Arts. Um, and then lastly, we have the Lacey School of Business kind of in that middle section in the bottom. Um, we actually opened a new building for the Lacey School of Business last fall and we're super excited to have our students back in there this year. For students who are kind of unsure what they want to study, we do have an exploratory studies program. So students will start taking courses in their major during their first year, um, in addition to taking courses um, as part of our core curriculum since we are a liberal arts institution. 
A unique feature of our core curriculum is our Indianapolis community requirement. Again, we're right in the city, so we love to engage with the community. Students will actually participate in a course where service in the community is actually integrated into the curriculum. While not a requirement for all majors, about 75% of our students will complete at least one internship before they graduate. Many of our students taking advantage again of our location for those internship opportunities during the academic year. Even though our students love the city and love our campus, about 40% of, of Butler students do spend at least one semester away from campus studying abroad through our 200 plus study abroad programs in 60 different countries. Because of all these hands-on experiences, uh, Butler students have had significant success after graduating. Um, that is demonstrated by our 98% placement rate within six months of graduation. So that is job placement as well as graduate school place, uh, placement. Butler is a residential college campus with a three-year housing requirement. And over the past five years, we've built two new residence halls, one for first-year students and one for sophomores with a focus on suite style living. Last summer, we partnered with Bon Appetit as our dining vendor, and they specialize in sustainability and work with local farmers. And again, being in central in Indiana, we love that. We love that we get to partner with some of those local farmers in the area. Butler has 130 clubs and student organizations and active Greek life with about 35% of our students participating and 20 Division I, Division I athletics teams. Students have access to free tickets for all the sporting events. And if you're a member of the Dog Pound, our official student section, you get special access to our men's basketball games. Something that I think you've probably heard of, um, as we've been talking today, that all of our schools have in common is our school pride and our great school spirit. And at Butler, that is represented through the Butler Way and our community of care. Looking over at the DePaul. DePaul was founded in 1837 and we celebrate over 180 years of academic excellence and commitment to student success. Here is where you'll build community, not only across our Tiger family, but also foster close relationships one-on-one -on -one with your professors. You're going to enter small class sizes where you are going to be an active and valued member of the discussion. Outside of class, you might be a member of a championship caliber D3 sports program or an artist on stage in the School of Music. You're going to be able to enjoy over 120 different clubs, organizations, and student-led groups, all the while pursuing internships and study abroad experiences. In fact, we require this and ask this of you because as part of our curriculum, you must complete two extended studies experiences before you graduate. During your time at DePaul and after, you'll be connected with graduates and become a member of an active alumni association. We're a small but mighty group we're a 2,000 undergrad, but we have an active network of 35,000 active members lending their time and support to you, not only as a student, but after you graduate. With our student body, we're entirely undergrad, and we do this for a reason. We believe in our liberal arts foundation where you're going to be able to explore what you're looking for. If any of you in the room have an idea of what you want to study, that's awesome. You can continue to do that at DePaul. But most of our students enter somewhere in between undecided and undeclared. We want you to get here, take some core classes, but you get to pick and choose. By March of your sophomore year is when you actually declare your major for us. So you have about a year and a half to get acclimated, get adjusted to your college schedule, and affirm maybe some of those ideas of what you're wanting to study. And with 49 majors, 56 minors across many different academic departments, there's probably gonna be something for you to study and experience at DePaul, I hope, at least. With, at, at DePaul, we've got two schools here, and I mentioned that earlier. So we have our College of Liberal Arts and our School of Music, which just add into our campus community. There's gonna be over 200 different concerts or shows each year, just in our performing arts, theater, and, and musical space. And then with the athletic piece, we have 23 different varsity athletic teams at the Division Three level. And on this slide here, you can see some facts and figures. I want to point out that close to 30% of our student body participate in those varsity athletic teams, which again, add to that sense of school spirit and camaraderie where you yourself might be on a team or you know a friend or a classmate. And that's my challenge to you. Should you be a future Tiger? You got to go to an athletic game or at least go to a show. With 23 teams and over 200 concerts, you got to go to one each semester. That's all I ask. At DePaul, you know, our Tiger community, our Tiger family stretches the globe, and our current student body represents 39 states and 39 countries. And yes, we call Indiana the Midwest home, but it's really cool to think about where you and your future classmates are coming from and what our campus community might look like. And today, 
this year our incoming class was one of our more diverse classes in recent years and it just affirms DePaul's commitment to diversity and inclusion in our student excellence. Today's campus is right around 55% wider Caucasian with 19% international students represented and a quarter of our student body identifying for multicultural communities and backgrounds. So it's a very diverse and active student body, lots of different tigers wearing different stripes and we're proud of all that, that make Greencastle their home for four years. We do have a five year dual degree program in our, in our School of Music. Most of our students again are in the College of Arts and our School of Music is audition based and audition required. I've talked about a few different things, but I want to just hit home that idea that you're going, you're coming to a community that has an eight to one student faculty ratio. Our community, our professors want to get to know you and they can't wait to hopefully see you in a future semester. And you can see some of the numbers here. And one of my favorite parts about DePaul is of course, we have a beautiful campus. I think Sarah talked about it, that we have 695 acres. It's a lot bigger than most small private liberal arts colleges. 500 of that is a nature park that we maintain and operate it's one of my favorite parts, and I think it's one of the reasons we recognize as one of the 50 most beautiful colleges in America. Next steps, DePaul's main application deadlines are December 1st for early action and February 1st for regular decision. If you find that you're ready to go for early decision, you can go on November 15th or January 15th, but early action for us is a great way to go. If you apply by December 1st, you really will have a decision by early January or late December at the very latest. We can't wait to see you at DePaul. All right. Established in 1820, Indiana University has a strong tradition of excellence and innovation both in and outside of the classroom. From nationally recognized academic programs to Division I varsity athletics, all in one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. IU will offer you rich experiences inside and outside of the classroom. Our 33,000 undergraduates hail from all 50 states and over 130 countries. IU celebrates not only the geographic diversity of our student body, but its ethnic, religious, political, and socioeconomic diversity that makes our learning community rich. Over 26% of our student body are currently domestic students of color. The heart of an IU education is the ability for students to customize their educational experiences. Our 12 schools offer more than 200 majors and just as many minors to choose from, meaning that there is something for everyone. Students will be able to work with academic advisors and faculty to create an academic program that is uniquely customized. Whether it's pursuing a double major, multiple minors, or even creating an, your own major through our individualized major program, IU students are working towards jobs that are not yet imagined. I use student support services will help our students succeed during their time at Indiana University and beyond. Through individualized academic advising sessions, our academic support centers uh, in our resident, residential neighborhoods and our Wells Library Learning Commons, students have access to tools that will help them become the best student that they can be. I use career services help our students begin their careers before they leave our campus by starting early and finishing strong. Our Career Development Center is targeting students who are still deciding what they want to major in. So they will help students understand their, their strengths and their interests, how they overlap, and what careers might be a good fit for them. And then help them match with majors at IU that will help lead to roles in those fields. Then once a student has declared a major and enters one of our 12 schools, they'll have access to one of those, to a, one of the 12 school specific career centers on our campus so that students will be able to uh, work with career advisors there to develop uh, field specific resumes, uh, have access to internship and career fairs, and also the hundreds of employers that come to campus every year to recruit IU students. Over 30% of students at Indiana will study abroad at least once before they graduate. We offer over 300 study abroad programs in more than 50 countries and in 18 languages, including English. More and more, we're seeing our students study overseas and combine that with an internship or hands-on research experience. At IU, what you learn outside of the classroom will be as valuable as what you learn inside. With over 750 student organizations, over 55 club and intramural sports, and a thriving arts and culture community that boasts over 1,500 performances on campus annually. From watching an opera staged by the world-class Jacobs School of Music at IU to touring the Eskenazi Museum of Art, 
you'll find that the cultural resources at IU and in Bloomington rival that of a much larger city. Um, one of my favorite shots of campus, I love that we live in the the era of drone uh, drone photography. It's this top left photo, um, and this is we have the fountain. That's the Showalter fountain in the middle, um, and there's lots of legends regarding the fish in the Showalter fountain and a missing fish that's going to return when IU men's basketball wins its sixth banner. Um, <laughs> Uh, but Showalter Fountain is in the middle of the Arts Plaza. And so from this view um, on the, you can see our Eskenazi Museum of Art, the Lilly Library, our School of Art, Architecture and Design. And it, the drone is hovering over the IU Auditorium right here. So there's just so much culture happening just in this one little shot. Um, but I absolutely love it because that's one of my favorite things about IU. Uh, Hoosier spirit is alive and well on the IU campus. Of our 24 varsity sports, the only two our students pay to go see are football and men's basketball, and roughly half of our undergraduates will purchase, purchase season tickets to those two sports. Assembly Hall boasts the largest student section in the NCAA, in NCAA basketball and is known as the hardest place to be a visiting team. Hoosier, Hoosier hospitality is exhibited throughout the state and throughout Bloomington and can be seen on our campus through a Culture of Care initiative. Culture of Care is a campus-wide student-led and staff-supported initiative focused on creating a campus culture in which members of the Indiana University Bloomington community demonstrate care for one another. Through bystander intervention, the Culture of Care initiative empowers students to support their peers. The Culture of Care initiative promotes helping one another, behavioral change, and raising awareness in four core areas, sexual well-being, mental health, alcohol and drug awareness, and respect. I strongly encourage interested prospective applicants to apply by our non-binding early action deadline of November 1st. Applying early action offers students the highest admission and scholarship consideration, and early action applicants will also hear back from us earlier, uh, letting you enjoy more of your senior year. Students can submit a complete application to IU through our internal application called Apply IU, or we're also on the common application and the coalition application. Please just submit one application though. And I think that we all would encourage you to only submit one application wherever you're applying, um, one per school. <laughs> Um, our application fee and essay are the same on all three platforms. And in addition to the application, we'll also need an official high school transcript. Uh, we are test optional. And if students choose to submit scores, they can report those on their application. Um, or if they're applying through a test optional policy, you don't need to submit scores at all. Uh, students applying through our test optional policy will have full access to merit scholarships and direct admission programs. We certainly do want to wish you the best in the season of applying to not probably not only our institutions, but others as well. If you have specific questions um, that we can't get to this evening, um, please do feel free to reach out to one of us or all of us. Um, all of our contact information is available on this slide and we'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, we do now have time for questions. So if there are any questions, you can use that Q&A feature now. Well, I think we have a few questions that while well, we have like, let's see, we're right at five minutes to go. Let's see. We have a few questions about engineering. Do we like to talk a little bit about our engineering programs respectively or? Yeah, I'll talk about ours. Ours is a little unique. Um, at Butler, we have a five year dual degree program actually with Purdue University. So another Indiana school. Um, our program is five years. Like I said, you'll actually graduate with two bachelors of science degrees, one from Butler and one from Purdue. You'll take the majority of your classes on our campus for your first three years, most likely in mathematics, computer science, biology, chemistry, something of that nature. 
and then take your classes at IU's, or sorry, at Purdue's campus at IUPUI, which is Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis, a mouthful, um, which is in downtown Indianapolis. It's about five miles from our campus and you'll take your classes with Purdue professors and you'll get a Purdue degree. Um, one of the unique majors in engineering that we offer is motorsports engineering. So as Ben mentioned earlier, um, we are right near the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And so there's lots of um, opportunities for motorsports and IndyCar and all of that. So um, motorsports engineering is definitely very popular um, in Indiana, but not so much across the country. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out our program. So I don't know if you you guys want to speak about any engineering programs you all offer either? I can do that. So at IU, we are home to the Luddy School of Informatics, Computing, and Engineering. It's one of the 12 schools on our campus. And the engineering that is offered at IU is super specific uh, and focused. So our engineering major is called Intelligent, System Engineer, Intelligent Systems Engineering. So our colleagues up at Purdue uh, teach students how to build things like our systems, uh, through electrical engineering and civil engineering. So our professors like to say at Purdue, they teach you how to build the bridge. At IU, we teach you how to make the build bridge a smart bridge. And so how do we design things that tell us when roads are wet? Um, and how does that make us safer then? Um, and so that smart design is what our intelligent systems engineering students are doing at IU. So really think forward-thinking technology-based solutions, uh, usually using the internet. And at DePaul, engineering is a little bit different, liberal arts foundation, but we partner up with a pre-engineering track program, often with Washington University in St. Louis and then Columbia in New York. So it's a traditionally, it's been a 3-2 program where you spend three years at DePaul, and then you're directly admitted into WashU or Columbia to continue on your respective Bachelor of Science in Engineering or go direct into grad school. I've seen a lot of students so opt to do their four years at DePaul because who doesn't want to leave and not have their senior year and then you can find a gateway into those two schools respectively or find a graduate path in engineering. And our next question, animal science. Anybody like to tackle animal science? So at IU, we offer animal behavior. Um, it's a small program in our College of Arts and Sciences that uh, some of our faculty worked together about a decade. They've been working together for about a decade. So we have faculty from our Department of Psychology and Brain Sciences, as well as our Department of Biology, that have really come together to form this really unique interdisciplinary major. Um, since it's been established, we've seen students that have gone on to work in zoos. We've seen students that have been successful in their applications to veterinary school as well. Um, so there, are, and then other students that are going into traditional like PhD programs from that. From that, um, so we're seeing students do a lot of really unique things with that animal behavior major at IU. We just offer kind of a pre-veterinary science track, so not anything super specific. So if you are looking for animal science specifically, I feel like you, you know, IU would be a good option um, or look at the kind of other schools that have that very kind of narrowly focused uh, degree program. In our final moments, friends, what piece of advice would you like to leave and send people off with for the evening? I will get us started. I always like to remind students that our job is to admit students. We are looking for reasons to admit you, and we know that this has been an incredibly difficult year, and your junior year, and now your senior year, or if it's your junior year now, whatever year you are, it's not what you expected, and it's not what you had hoped. Um, but we understand that, um, and we're here to support you. And so know that, know that what we're looking for are reasons to admit you, and we're not going to use anything that may have happened um, through the course of the pandemic against you in the, in the admissions process. I would also just kind of echo what Jill just said, but also have fun. Um, enjoy being a high school student. I know you can't be with your friends and going to homecomings and, and you know social events right now, but take time for yourself. Um, enjoy this process. It should be fun. Um, it can be stressful, but, but we're here to help you. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us um, and ask us lots of questions. That's what we're here for. 
we know this is not at all the college search you might have planned, but seriously, by joining us tonight, this is a huge step in the right direction. You've heard from all of us. You have our contact info. We're here to help, and we can't wait to work with you, and we hope to see you at our future schools. There's plenty of virtual events. All of our schools have created so much, so my big piece of advice is join them. Check out any of our virtual offerings, and that's a great way for you before you book that travel or make it out safely to figure out what our schools are all about. Thank you all for spending some time with us tonight. All right, guys, thank you for joining us. Um, when you guys close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question um, survey. We'd really appreciate as much feedback or any that you can give. Um, also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted by VACRO. Um, so make sure to sign up for other sessions at um, strivescan.com slash Virginia. Um, and in about a week, you'll be able to see the recording for this if you wanna review it, send it to a friend, any of those kind of things. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining us. Have a great night.